All right, guys, it's Rabia. And Matt. And this is Sounds Like with Anderton's TV. we are going to attempt to sound like Josh Homme from Queens of the Stone Age. Oh, such a wicked sounding guitar player. It is, very original. Not a lot of people know this, but the guy to my left here, Matthew Homme, is a, is a big fan of Queens of the Stone Age. Yes. I think you're going to take lead on this one in particular. I'm going to do my best. Basically, what we want to do with this whole series is like, we want to choose a couple of tracks that we like, that we want to replicate the sort of sound of, rather than a, a, a whole tone of that player, because it becomes a lot more difficult. Let's have a go. But anyway, we just happened to have found ourselves next to Rickenbacker and Gretsch. <laughs> just two, by two accident. Two which, you know, look as if they might be in the right kind of quirky ballpark. Do you know what? I've just spotted one that I think actually kind of looks very similar to one of the ones he uses anyway. Yeah. And that would be this one here. The dramatic. Yeah. 335 quid. It's a lot of Oh, yeah, mate. Let's go with this. Let's go with this. Yeah. The dramatic by Gretsch. This might sound random, but I reckon we go orange. Orange? Yes. We can get, I think we can get something. I mean, these are way out of our price range. They but are a bit. I'm looking at the Tiny Terror over here, which is 365 quid, and yeah. paired with our Gretsch, which was about the same. Yeah. That's only clocking in about 700 quid. So, so that we can top that with pedals. A lot of, we can find the, the weirder ones. Okay, Tiny yeah. Terror. Sold. Matt, I want to make a suggestion. Yep, shoot. Well, when we were reviewing uh, quite a while ago with Rob and Lee, we were reviewing the Mini Fuga pedals. Yeah. And there was one in particular that I thought was absolutely immense for doing that kind of Queens of the Stone Age vibe. As you can see in the cabinet there, the Mini Fuga Drive, I reckon that might do the job. Those ones are quite cool. Um, so, the first face. Yeah. First face. That one's the, the silicone one, is the blue one. And that's the germanium one, the red one. I could be wrong, but germanium is definitely a thicker kind of. It almost sounds like it's like there's a there's like a notch in the mid somewhere, whereas silicon is a little bit more ratty. So good work. Sweet. Ooh. Green Rhino there. Yeah. It's got 100 hertz. Uh, yeah, it works. 12 dB of boost on it, and that is absolutely crazy. Let's get the Green Rhino. Matthew, yeah. can you summarise the Josh Homme rig for everyone on YouTube? Yeah. Josh Homme, we've gone for the Gretsch Electromatic, an Orange Tiny Terror, a Mini Fug, yeah. um, for a bit of for that. That's, that's the drive, drive one, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, the Fuzz Face, the Germanium Fuzz, and then a... Green Rhino. A Green Rhino. Yeah. And that's going to hopefully boost our low end to get that really thick sound. So let's go pedal crazy down the warehouse. So we're here, we're in the video room, we made it. We're back in the video room. We are. With our fine collection of Josh Homme related gear. But we reckon out of guitar, amp, three pedals, yeah. we're pretty much on a kind of an all round Josh Homme tone. Yeah, and I think as well for the, for the sort of, the, the money that you'd pay to get these kind of tones if mm. you wanted to do that style, uh, you know, we're, we're still well within sort of 1500 quid, really. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah. So, so firstly, guitar. Who's got the Gretsch Electromatic, um, and it's a wicked looking guitar. I, I love these guitars. Do you? Yeah. To be fair, they're just cool looking. Yeah. They really are. Um, made in the Far East, but they do the job. Yeah. And this is kind of the style of guitar that Josh Homme plays, isn't it? Yeah, we kind of thought this because, well, it's just it's old school, and I think mm. he's he's one of those guys who seems to use a lot of vintage gear. Um, he, in, in a modern way, you know. Hopefully, it can do do what we need it to do. Yeah, I think as well. It not only looks the part, but it definitely lends itself to these these kind of sounds. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so amps wise, we've just got an Orange Tiny Terror. Uh, uh, you're all very familiar with these amps, hopefully. Really straightforward. You know, this is we're, we've got it on the 15 watt setting, and we're running it into this Marshall cab. It's 412, just because we've got it mic'd up. Um, and you can get the Tiny Terra combo, yeah. um, which can do this, you know, exactly or the same. Or a cab. Yeah, or get the orange cab. Um, but for the, state, for the sake of the video, having it all mic'd up, uh, we just thought it would be better to do that. Um, so, on the ground, this is where 
I would say the Josh Homme magic is happening for us, isn't it? Definitely. I mean, the Orin, the Ty Terra and the Gretsch together, I don't think you'd get it close. <laughs> no. If, if you, even if you tried. Well, let's have a listen. All right. This is, this is it. This is just the guitar and the amp. So, here we go. Oh, yeah, we're in, we're in drop C. <laughs> Yeah, sounds great. Just not that much like Josh Army. No, no, but it's not a bad guitar sound. No, no, no. It's, you know? it's, it's quite impressive. It's a tiny little amp. Cool. Well, yeah. So, looking on the ground in the B cam, as you can see, we've got the uh, the MF Drive by Moog, and these are the Mini Fuga pedals that they've been doing, and these are probably about a year and a half old now, I think. Yeah. Um, but they're very popular because they definitely capture the essence of those old school analog vintage kind of vibes. Um, to be honest, I haven't heard much else that sounds like these pedals. No. They're, they're, they're quite unique. Yeah, and they look cool as well. We've got it set uh, reasonably, I think most things are halfway, just over. Yeah. Uh, the gain's just shy off halfway, tone's just above, and then the other two, output and filter, are on about halfway. And both the peak switch and the drive switch are switched upwards. Um, so let's just hear what that sounds like with the guitar and the amp. <laughs> So as you can hear, it's sucking all the definition out of the tone. I guess that just sounds a bit quite muddy on its yeah. own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, well, how we got it set anyway. Mm. Um, but I think it's when the other two kind of mm. bring the crunch in, it, it really kind of. Well, hit. yeah. So next up is the fuzz face. Uh, it's the germanium fuzz face made by Dunlop. Yep. Uh, now that on its own sounds a bit like this. <laughs> So we've got the we've got the fuzz pretty much off almost completely, and the volume's about halfway. But it does it definitely it's it's it adds a lot. It's it's this is this little rig is is basically where all together or just certain combinations of these three pedals, the guitar and the amp, are achieving the Josh Homme tones. Yeah, that's that's basically what we were smiling before about <laughs> earlier because we we're like, yeah, I think we've done pretty good here. We'll um, try try then the Green Rhino on its own. <laughs> So as Beer previewed there, <laughs> that gets a certain sound. Um, so I think we were aiming for well, maybe like three or four different sounds from I think it was the songs. over the years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Songs for the Deaf is obviously where they went whoop and went yeah. super huge. Um, way huge, in fact. Way, way huge. Yeah. Um, Basically, the tones that he achieved on that album is kind of what we're hearing when we play with these pedals. Yeah, and I think we got three three main tones we got. Yeah, we did. We got, it was a green rhino on its own yeah. as kind of like a, a really crunchy riff tone. Yeah. Uh, green rhino and fuzz face. Yeah, green rhino and fuzz face gave us our sort of main rhythmy tone. Yeah, yeah. And then I guess it was all three together um, for more of a lead tone. Yeah, that's the, it was kind of the broken up kind of lead tone that he uses on Songs for the Dead. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. So so this is the green round and the first face together. It's nice actually, the fuzz face kills a bit of the It does. The fuzz from the green yeah. line. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I think to be fair, like we're just smiling because it is Especially when you do that kind of, when you do the... Try, try a bit of the lead stuff with the... So now what, yeah, if we chuck the, the mini fuga in there, you'll hear this is where you get the kind of dirty tones. So, it's a pretty noisy combination, but I don't think it's meant to be quiet. 
Do you know what I mean? I think the whole idea nah. of using a sound like this is that it's it's like pushing the speakers to the edge, you know? It's almost like as soon as you stop playing, it'll just go like whoop. One thing that I do love as well, again, you could use a noise suppressor to kill some of the noise, but I mean, my personal opinion, noise suppressors is sometimes they affect the tone. Um, so I kind I kind of like having the the noise in the background, and no one's going to hear it when you're playing. You know? No, 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 especially when you got a kit and yeah. some yeah, other, yeah. other people around you. So, um, but I, I have to say as well, the Tiny Terror, it really, I, it, I think that having the Tiny Terror as the foundation is what's given us that tone because having such a simple control layout. Well, it's and, got and th having it's got three knobs. Yeah, and the tone knob in the center is all the way to the left, completely, completely all the way to the I'm left. Taking everything out. Um, gains at about eleven o'clock, and the volume's just over halfway. Um, and it basically it just, yeah, I think we did a good job. I think this this kind of thing definitely lends itself to yeah, like driving tubes. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. Like, there you go. To be honest, I thought I thought the Moog would do most of the work, but I think actually the Green Rhino is, is probably the most important bit here. Yeah. It's like the basis for everything, isn't it? Yeah, it's certainly, yeah, it's certainly made, just the combination, I think. It's yeah. just like, somehow, because we obviously, you know, we wanted to sound like Josh Omi, and that's what, you know, you guys uh, sort of asked us to do. And, um, I guess it's a bit of a punt because obviously we don't have the exact gear, so it's very much a yeah, case yeah. of like going, oh, I reckon that'll work, I reckon this'll work. And then, you know, running around the shop trying to think. And to be honest, I think we, we couldn't have done a better job, really. Personally, no, no. I'm convinced in the room. I'm super pleased, and hopefully that comes across to you guys. But um, let us know. Comment below. Yeah. And uh, let us know what you think. Yeah, all, the, all the links for all this gear. If you like the way it's sounding, you want to sound like Josh Shummer, you can find all the links for the gear. Uh, and it's all available at Anderton's. So. As usual, these pedals and these this, all this gear does other things. Yes, so it does. So if you buy it all, <laughs> you might not just, you know. Yeah. It took us quite a while to get the sound, but um, obviously you can get some other wicked sounds out of them. So yeah, this has been Sounds Like with Anderton's TV. I've been Matt. I've been Rabir. Thank you very much and see you later.